inclined plane, inclined angle problems. So these tend to give students a really hard time, especially when working with that inclined angle. And you may yourself be struggling with these types of problems. Don't worry, we're going to cover these together, break them down completely as we practice through application, drawing the free body diagram for these types of problems. So let's do these together. Quick pause. Are you looking to pass your civil epi exam in the coming months? Get that EIT license, move forward with your career, and be one step closer to becoming a professional engineer? Well, here's a course that will help you do just that. This course is designed to make you less stressed, less frustrated because everything is organized for you. This course will guide you through studying all the topics you will need to know for your civil FE exam. So you don't have to worry about using any other resource except this course. You're going to build your confidence and you will absolutely feel that you're capable of passing this FE exam. You're going to do this by going through plenty of practice problems. You're going to have access to practice problems with full guided video solutions. Then you're going to test your understanding by doing plenty of additional practice problems and quizzes. So you're going to get better each day. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to learn from these mistakes as you do one practice problem at a time. Stop procrastinating. Stop overthinking and don't put this thing on hold. You're in control here and with your commitment, you will pass your FE exam. Check out the link below and please, if you need help with anything or have any questions, you can always email me. Here we go. We got three inclined angle problems that we're going to analyze and draw the free body diagram for. Do these on your own. Get a blank sheet of paper, draw the free body diagram for box A, draw the free body diagram for the beam, the whole beam essentially beam AB and draw the free body diagram for this beam AB. Do these on your own and check your work with mine. You want to get that feedback. You want to learn from your mistakes, see where you got stuck and so on. So now let's start with free body diagram box A. That's all we're doing for this. Just the box. That's all we need. Box B is easy. Box A is the tricky part. So now what we will do is isolate box A and free but the body. I'm going to say box A. And I'm going to take the body free it from its surroundings or environment. So let me draw it like that. So that's our box. And we say it has a center of gravity G. And we know this is what? This is a rope or tension. Tension in the cable. So we know tension's always away. So that's not bad. It's always away. You just draw it like that. That's our tension. Let's call it T. So then we know that this block hits the incline. It has... A force hit in it so it hits the incline the incline is going to apply an equal and opposite reaction that's our normal force so we always have that normal force and it's always perpendicular normal force normal means perpendicular so it's going to be the normal force that goes this way and for normal now what else do we have we have also friction I'm gonna assume that we do have friction and that's always the case. In this case, let's focus on static friction, static equilibrium. And let's assume the box is actually trying to go down. The box here is pushing this block B this way. So let's assume that if the block here, block A was going up or B was causing this to go up, the force of friction would go this way. So force of friction friction is always the opposing the direction of motion so in this case let's assume the block here the impending motion is down the incline so the force of friction will be in the opposite direction always opposing the direction of motion so that's the force of friction f sub f so then we know we have that 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 i'm missing one more what is it the weight the weight w so i can denote the weight like this this is my weight and notice how i drew it because the weight is always going towards the center of the earth so it's going to be vertically down so that's the weight w i'll denote it by w on the side so that's the free body diagram now we know when we do the analysis for these remember that we do the analysis with a different coordinate system with a different coordinate system that has the x direction in the x prime direction along the parallel parallel to the plane parallel meaning this way so how i can denote this is we change the orientation when we do our analysis and we have a new x-axis we call that x prime 
that's along the parallel and we have a new y-axis we call that y prime remember our original is what we're used to it's what we're used to with this right this is the normal this is my x this is my y this is usually what we use but now for inclined plane problems especially ones with a box on the incline you have to do it this way it makes the work easier this is the most efficient way x prime y prime is the new system we're using so we know anything that goes this way along the y prime will be positive anything that goes this way along x prime will be positive and anything that goes this way is negative anything that goes down along the y prime is negative so now that's the new system and in that case let's analyze these we will look at these and look the tension is fine it's along x prime the normal force is fine as well it's along y prime the force of friction is fine because it's along x prime now the problem is the weight is not the weight we have to get it into respective components and now to get that we will have a weight component that goes along the y prime and notice it goes down so it's going to be negative because it's going this way so this is w y prime the weight component in the y prime direction perpendicular and also this weight is broken down into a component along the x prime so this is w x prime so we will denote that like this w x prime along the x direction and that one will be negative as well because it goes down towards the incline opposing this positive direction so that's that now the big question the main question is this angle theta where is that gonna be is it gonna be this or is it gonna be that maybe you've done these a lot and you have this memorized I'll just tell you right off the bat the angle theta let me use it like this this is our theta of 30 degrees is actually this angle this is our theta angle this will always be theta so when you're doing these problems if you can remember this that theta is with the y prime component again theta is always with the y prime component when you do these inclined plane problems with a box on an incline if you remember that saves you time go in with that there's a reason for it let's prove that so first of all i know this is 30 degrees and i know from like a rule that if that's 30 we can say okay we have let's say these lines and i like drawing these just to get me the idea of what angles are the same so if this is 30 this is 30 you would agree with me this has to be 30 right and this is also 30 so if this is 30 that's 30 so what i can do is the following so if this is 30 here i can see that this here this angle is 30 that's 30 degrees so if that angle is 30 this angle has to be 30 or you can think of it like this it's the same as this angle which is 30 degrees so if that's 30 what's this angle let me use a different color for that angle what's this angle here this angle will be the 90 notice it's all about 90 degrees this angle is 90 notice this angle is 90 if i take 90 degrees minus 30 i'm gonna get this angle which is what 60 degrees again i took 90 degrees minus 30 i got 60 degrees and i'm focused at this 90 degree it's all about 90 degrees you're always looking for those 90 degrees so now that's 60 degrees how come this is theta how come that's 30 we said theta is 30 just know theta is equal to the 30. how come this is 30 that's because notice that this angle is 90 here comes that 90 degree if i take the 90 degree minus 60 degrees i'm gonna get 30. i'm gonna get theta if i take the 90 degree minus 60 i'm gonna get theta and that's why that's theta it's always with the y prime component here's a different way you can actually think about this so let's say we have our original y and x axis so this is what we're used to we know y is always vertical this is my y positive y negative y positive x negative x notice this is the ground this is what the ground the flat ground the x and y is the y direction and we know acceleration due to gravity goes to the center of the earth 
in that y direction. But now what did we do? We changed this and inclined it by 30 degrees. 30 degrees. We changed the starting ground here, which is the x, and we inclined it by 30 degrees. We actually built a new system, a new coordinate system by 30 degrees. So what that happens is, from the original x, I'm gonna rotate it by 30 degrees, just like what we have. If I do that, I can denote it like this. This is 30 degrees. So doing that, I can put my new x axis, which is actually our x prime axis, in red. So if I show that in red, it would look something like this. So this is my new x axis. So now I did that for the x axis, and I'm gonna label that as x prime, x prime. So this is positive x prime, negative x prime. From the original x to my x prime. I did that for the x, I have to do it for the y. So for the y, I'm gonna take that and rotate it by 30 degrees. So notice this, and I'm gonna get a new y axis, and it looks something like this. So that is close enough. So this is my new y axis, and that is going to be 30 degrees here, and we know that's 30, and I have to label this, this is my y prime positive, this is my y prime negative. So now, this is 30, that's 30. I know this is 30. And what's this? This is 30. So now based on this, if you have to imagine this, the weight is down like this. So I can say, okay, my weight is down like this. I can imagine the weight component. That's the weight which goes down towards the y. This component is gonna be what? My wy prime. And notice it's 30 degrees. And my wx prime is this component, right? And that's one way we can also think about this, using this, and this always works as well for the remaining problems as we do these. So let's try this out. Let's do this. We're drawing the free body diagram of the beam. So what we will do is take the beam and isolate it free, but the body, and it looks something like this. So we know we have a pin at B, so it has a component BY reaction and BX. And also we have a distributed load. That distributed load, we can put it into a single concentrated load. And that's gonna be just the area of the concentrated load. So it's just the W, the distributed load times four meters, single point load. So then we know that this angle here is what this angle is actually inclined by 30 degrees so i changed it from the starting ground i inclined it from the horizontal by 30 degrees now we have a a, a roller and the roller always has a perpendicular component so this component the right way to draw this is something like this it's going to be a reaction r for reaction at a and now we know based on the classic analysis for these, we're not going to use a new coordinate system. We're not going to use y prime and x prime. We keep it as the original one we're used to, where x is along the x, regular, flat ground, y is vertically up and down, x, y. That's the analysis we do for beams. The inclined ones, we do always use x prime, y prime, but not for these. So now, based on this, the question is, these are fine, this is along the y, along the x, y, that's fine. This one is a problem because we know we need the y component, which is r, a, y, because we're doing the analysis in the y. We need that. And also we need a component here in the x, r, a, x. Now, to get those components, I need to figure out where this angle of 30 is. Where would we place that? Is it here or is it here? So you might know this, or maybe you pick this. That's incorrect, it's not here. It's always with the Y component. If you can remember that, it's always with the Y component. For most of these, you'll be set, especially for the FE exam. So the 30 degrees should be here. And there's also a reason for this. There's a reason for this. So we know, first of all, that's 30 degrees. I can say that this is 30 degrees. That's 30, that's 30. Then I know, look at this, 90 degree triangles, I already see one. This is 90, so what's this angle? This is 90, take 90 minus 30, 60 degrees. Now do you see another triangle? No, this reaction is perpendicular, 
perpendicular meaning at 90 degrees so this has to be 90 degrees that total angle is 90 degrees if i take that total angle of 90 degrees minus 60 degrees i get 30 degrees so that's why that's 30 degrees and this angle we know we can take the total angle of 90 degrees minus 30 this has to be 60 degrees but we only really need that so rax would be ra sine of 30 ray would be ra cosine of 30. so also we do the same thing for the last one it's the same idea so we can say that the free body diagram of the beam let's just take the beam and we isolate the beam we know b is here so it has a reaction it's a pin so it has two reactions b1 and bx and for this we have a w so what we can do is reduce this into a concentrated load the fast way and you just take the area of the whole triangle but the base will be the total base or you can take two triangles a concentrated load concentrated load here acting at the center of gravity of each triangle you'll get the same answer but the one that's easier for this type of symmetric triangle you take the total area of the triangle so it's going to be one half base the total base be careful you take six meters times the distributed load that should give you the answer so if you do it two distributed loads two concentrated loads you will get the same answer so you can plug in let's say 10 for w you'll get the same answer so now based on that we will take this and incline this again we're dealing with the incline but now we have a problem what's this this is a three four five triangle three four five triangle and what i like to do when we have three four five triangles is denote the angle that makes my work easier then I, with that angle i can visualize where the three is where the four is and where the five is or maybe just use the angle so maybe you only want to use the angle you can get the angle by doing the tan inverse of the opposite which is three over the adjacent which is four you can do it that way and just use the angle for your analysis but let's use three four five triangle so based on this i know here at a i have a reaction that's going to be perpendicular so i'll draw it like this and this is my reaction at a and i know here that this angle is going to be theta that i labeled from the three four five triangle i got that which is the same thing as this angle so based on this i know i need the reaction in the y this is r a y and i need the reaction in the x this is my r a x because we're doing the analysis using again x y the original coordinate system up and down right and left so now based on that if theta is there where's theta going to be here or here with the y component you see the pattern it's with the y component you put it there there is a reason for that just like what we discussed here it's the same reason this is 30 we know this here has to be the angle this is 90 so i take 90 minus that is going to be this angle then to find this angle this is 90 i take 90 minus 90 minus theta so it's the same process it's actually identical but now if i know the angle there is theta let's imagine that with the triangle if i draw like the small slope triangle theta is this angle which is the same as this angle right so theta is the angle so with respect to theta this is the adjacent side so i have to put the four here and i have to put the three here and i have to put the five here so be very careful theta is this so it's hard to see but theta would be this here it's the same as this theta which is ultimately that theta with the y component now you just re rotate that triangle put the four on the adjacent which is the vertical the three on the horizontal and the five on the hypotenuse side so it's uh, essentially in that orientation so r a y would be r a which is going to be in the y so it's going to be four over five and r a x would be what the magnitude r a and we take that times three over five so be careful it's not this right you basically flip it what you're doing is flipping it so if you see this problems and you know to flip it you'll be set you're flipping these triangles for r a x and r a y and that's how we would get these